Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. And I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. A third person has died from COVID-19 in San Diego County, an 87-year-old woman. This as the number of confirmed cases in San Diego County continues to rise. The county just updated its numbers. We now have 341 confirmed cases. That's an increase of 44 in one day. In the meantime, we're learning more about a county model that predicts 35,000 local cases by mid-May and 350 deaths. The supervisor, Nathan Fletcher, says those numbers can be brought down. So we continue to ask the public uh, to adhere um, to the stay-at-home orders, to the social, physical distancing orders, and to the steps we're taking. The county is also working to increase the number of local hospital beds before an expected surge of patients hits in the next two to six weeks. Although the cruise ship industry is shut down for now, more cruise ships are arriving here in San Diego. Holland America arrived today carrying over 800 passengers. The ships are completing voyages that began before the COVID-19 outbreak. News 8's Angie Lee was at the Embarcadero earlier today and she says passengers should disembark tomorrow. Carlo and Barbara Lee, no ship has or will be allowed in San Diego Bay without first being cleared by the Port of San Diego, the County Health Department, the CDC, the Coast Guard and Customs and Border Protection. Now, with that being said, the mess down behind me followed all the right protocol and no one has been reported sick. Holland America has contacted the Port of San Diego to request to disembark approximately 800 passengers aboard the Mustang. The ship arrived late this afternoon at B Street Pier and won't disembark today. They are scheduled to do that sometime Friday and Saturday. Mustam left Auckland, New Zealand on March 1st and was sailing a New Zealand and South Pacific crossing cruise that was scheduled to end here in San Diego on April 3rd. But because of the coronavirus outbreak, a change in course, the cruise line issued this statement. Everyone on Mustam has been safe and well cared for. There are no known or suspected cases of COVID-19 among the 842 guests and 542 crew on board. Officials are expected to come aboard the ship and check each passenger in relation to customs and immigration. When guests disembark the ship, they will go directly to the airport for flights home. As a precautionary measure, the motor coaches used for transfers will be disinfected after each trip. The Port of San Diego wants San Diegans to know the public's health is their top priority. In the meantime, the celebrity eclipse is expected to arrive on March 30th and will disembark roughly 2,500 passengers between March 30th and the 31st. It will remain in port until April 1st. That ship will also have to follow the same protocols as the Mass Dam. Barbara Lee. Actually, I'll take it, Angie. Thank you. This week, President Trump commended the telehealth industry for its response to an increase in coronavirus calls. And now more than ever, patients are seeing their doctors by way of video. Here in San Diego, Sharp Reese Steely also reports a huge spike in televisits. News 8's Heather Hope has the story. Doctor visits are traditionally done inside a hospital or in person, but amid this coronavirus outbreak, doctors at Sharp Reese Steely are seeing a surge in televisits or visits via the phone. I've done several of them already today. Can't get in to see a doctor face to face? You have options. Hi, Mike. How are you doing today? Nice to see you. Hey, Dr. Levinson. How are you doing? Medical appointments by phone are surging. It's actually saved a lot of people time and money. Dr. Edward Green in internal medicine at Sharp Reese Steely in Otay Ranch has been in practice for 17 years, evolving with the latest technology. People are concerned that they got the coronavirus. Dr. Green says due to overwhelming COVID-19 calls, televisits have been easier and safer. We're screening pretty much everybody at their home, you know, their cough, if they got chills, if they got fever. If Before the coronavirus crisis, Sharp reported an average of 50 phone visits and five video visits. And now there are over 1,800 phone visits and 220 video visits. I can tell you it works the exact same way. In, in good majority of instances. But there can be virtual delays and challenges. We saw this waiting for your medical professional prompt up for some time during our visit due to a backlog of so many video calls. As you can see, well, we had a little bit of uh, technical difficulty today. If the video doesn't work, we can automatically just pick up the phone and do the same thing. So who's eligible? Patients 18 and up whose insurance is accepted and have seen a doctor in the last 12 months. 
The video visits can be done via smartphone, computer, or tablet, ideal for follow-ups and certain medical conditions, including flu, sore throat, back aches, eye problems, sprains, and injuries. For your next doctor visit, if you'd like to set up a televisit, just contact your doctor as hospitals in the coming weeks anticipate becoming overburdened with more patients. Carlo? I'll take it. Thanks, Heather. The union representing some local civilian Navy workers is calling for better protections from the coronavirus. They say child and youth programs aren't doing enough screening and cleaning. News 8's Brandon Lewis explains the changes they want to see. Barbara the union that represents the workers here say that the Navy and child and youth programs might be putting them at risk and they are asking them to step up and start following some of the protocols that are already in place. So they're about three weeks too late uh, when it comes to trying to stop the spread of this. The union that represents Navy child care workers is demanding child and youth programs help stop the potential spread of coronavirus. Child youth programs keeps putting out measures they say they're taking. Unfortunately, they're not following through with all of those measures. The local American Federation of Government Employees says it took almost three days to deep clean a facility after a parent got sick. If their children are asymptomatic, they can pass it on to the caregivers who could, who it could potentially be fatal for them. And they're not making that connection. They also claim some non-essential service members are abusing the program. If a service member is, is not working, then they should be obligated to keep their children with them at home. This isn't a vacation. We reached out to Naval Base San Diego, but were unable to get a response with their public affairs team busy handling the Mercy deployment. CYP leadership in Washington also did not respond to an afternoon message. The union says it took them weeks to get a response to their list of suggested changes, like temperature checks for everyone entering the building, better cleaning, and restrictions. We don't want to continue to spread this throughout San Diego. So the child youth programs has a responsibility uh, not only to the community, but also to the service members and, and to the caregivers that they expect to come to work every day. While neither the Navy nor child and youth programs got back to us today, we will, of course, stay on top of this story and bring you any response when we get it. Barbara Lee. Today, San Diegans turned out despite the stay at home orders to donate much needed blood. This was at the Mossy Nissan in Escondido this afternoon. Right now, San Diego County is facing a shortage of available blood, and the Red Cross is making an urgent plea for donations. If you'd like to donate, the Red Cross asks that you make an appointment first so they can maintain social distancing guidelines. And more positive news. In less than two weeks, San Diegans have donated $6.5 million to the COVID-19 Community Response Fund, and now we're getting to see how that money is being used. This food giveaway in Point Loma today was made possible thanks to a $500,000 grant to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego and North County Food Banks. Enough food was handed out to support 200 families. The San Diego Foundation's CEO says the foundation has always responded to emergencies in our area and that the same type of generosity is being seen nationwide. Almost a quarter billion dollars has been raised by 170 community foundations in 49 states. If you're able, please join News 8, the San Diego Foundation, and our partners and give to the San Diego COVID-19 Response Fund. In addition to food security, your donation will help provide assistance with rent, utility bills, income replacement, and no interest business and community loans. 100% of the donations will go to organizations helping San Diegans impacted by COVID-19. Donate now at sdfoundation.org slash COVID-19 or on the News 8 app.